about making a lid for this teapot um, body that I threw during class last week. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do two different potential lids that are not thrown. Of course, if you did throw a lid or you have a wheel at home, I talked about that technique where you, we threw it upright and then it goes, it fits in the teapot like that. It can be trimmed here on the wheel if you have a wheel or I could hand build and kind of play around with some unusual carved lid using my thrown part. However, what I want to focus on more today is ways that you can hand build a, a nicely fitting lid. So I have a little slab here and I'm just going to, this, this body is about leather hard um, and I'm just going to put my slab in here just a little bit so that it, it has the impression of the diameter of the lid aperture. I did already do a few of these and let them set up so here's one that I did earlier today and I, I, I even pretty much cut it out already so it looks like that. Um, and then I'm going to get that a little bit damp. This is another one that's on the damp side and looking for my scoring tool. Here it is. And a brush. I will just add some water and score. And you know, I could have made a flat bottom. I could have no bottom to this thing and just allowed this to be the lid. But I've chosen to kind of play around with the kind of a vol volumetric lid. So here's the second side. Um, and scoring it up. Now I'm ready to put the two sides together like that. So it kind of looks like a French macaroon. Um, so just quickly push that together, grab a rib to kind of clean it up quickly. Clean it up a little bit with a sponge. And now this one, I'm not going to have a traditional flange like I will on the next one I hand build. This one is just going to rest right there. And I've chosen to um, put a little, a series of little uh, balls um, in a symmetrical way on it that will actually hold it in place. Overall, I'm just demonstrating some really basic techniques and not a lot of personal voice or style, but I want you guys to take these basic demonstrations and run with it and get eccentric and make your uh, teapots and creamers and sugar balls as fun and playful and of course also in collaboration with your collaborating artist. This is where you can really get some interesting aesthetic and formal dialogue going with, with your collaborating artists. I think I'm one too short, but I think I, I won't bother rolling out a couple extra balls. I'll just leave it like, like that. And then you can sort of see that that just can become a way to hold your your fun hand-built lid on your teapot. Of course, that really needs to set up a little so that it's really leather hard, the balls are, before I um, drop it in my teapot with uh, confidence. So that's kind of lid number one, and it could have any number of really fun scored and attached knobs on the top. I'm not gonna kind of do anything real fancy right now for you guys. And then the second lid I wanted to do is one that could have is like a it's like a hand building technique that allows you to have a um, a, a, a really nicely fitted lid that doesn't pop out of the the opening very much 
and is a little bit more akin to some of the ways I showed you how to throw a flange on your teapot. So this is just a slab that I where I made a, a, a small slight indentation in here. And I really did that just to show you that you can um, use that opening and then trace inside and outside that line a little bit to make a really nice flange. But I'm really lucky and I happen to have a lot of baking supplies. So I'm gonna use a couple of my concentric circles that are used for cutting out biscuits and cookies. So um, I already checked that these were the right dimensions and I have, now I have the opening of my flange and now I have a larger circle that will allow me to um, cut out just a ring. Now this ring um, needs to be, this is a little bit tricky getting it in there because obviously this is bigger than my opening. And so obviously this needs to be a little bit stiff, but not too stiff. Because if it's too stiff, then you'll um, never get it inside without cracking and breaking it. So on this one, I'm kind of scoring just the inside of my opening on the top of the teapot. and um, also scoring on my flange. Adding a little water. And here's sort of a delicate process because I got to get it in there. I don't want to uh, mess it up too much. I want it to look pretty nice and professional once that flange gets inside. Um, I think it's stretching a little as I do this, so I might have to cut a little bit of it out. Eh, I think it'll, I think it'll gut work. Now, of course, I want to make sort of a quick video. So after I attach this, this would be a really good time to stop and let this set up a little, so that it, um, I can do the next steps with a little bit more finesse on the clay. But I don't want to stop the video, so I'm just going to spin this around. I, I just happen to have the steel rib here, so I'm using that, but any number of, of your ribs will work well for this. But like, like that just detached a little while I was doing it, and that's really happening because, because I didn't wait to to get these two pieces, the flange and the body, to sort of stiffen a little together. So I'm gonna let it be soft and not as clean as it would be if I'd given it a good half an hour before I, I did that step. And, um, you know, I have, I could cut a, a disc out and just allow that to be my lid and just rest in there. I also did another one of these kind of impressed lids and I think I'll try to use one of these as my lid. So this one is just um, hollow on the inside. Take my X-Acto knife, which for me is like a really very indispensable tool in my studio. I like the um, fettling knife that comes in your kits, but the X-Acto knife, knife is just so much uh, thinner and so it allows for more precise cutting. So I would, of course, go in and clean that this up. Um, you know, maybe use a tool like this to get rid of those really sharp edges. Um, and then a rib to kind of clean them up even more. I always, uh, if I want my things to be nice and round looking, I always do these like broad kind of fast strokes as I'm spinning something just to help keep it kind of, um, so that I don't dr gouge one area or give too much attention to one area of the circle and then by doing so maybe make it look not as circular. All right, so I have this. In order for me to set it in there, I'm probably gonna need to have a little bit of a, some sort of knob. Um, just to hold on to it as I try to set it in there because it's going to be really hard for me to get it out if I don't have something on there. Oh, 
Okay, make sure that's set and put it in there and there's my lid. Like I said, it needs a little cleaning up. I need to kind of finesse that, that flange once it's a little stiffer, but that's another lid option right now. And I just wanna finish this video by showing you a lidded piece that I made uh, a long time ago in the mid 90s, I think right when I was uh, in graduate school or maybe right before. I think right before. Anyway, this is a thrown piece. It started with just a thrown flared piece. And then I took a slab, like, like a slab like this, and you know, attached it and then gave it some kind of wavy qualities and then of course scored it and attached it to my thrown base. But then I just did these two linear pieces of clay as a flange that then support a um, fat kind of volumetric lid that's in some ways very similar to this one. And then that goes in there and um, you know, I put lots of polka dots on here. There's a lot of different um, glaze color. This is fired. This is porcelain fired to cone six and oxidation if you're curious. But here's like ways that you could embellish your teapot in collaboration with your collaborator or artist to um, take something that's pretty basic and maybe not that exciting and bump it up and give it the kind of the, the personal style details that you're expected to have. All right, so um, thank you very much. And thanks to Arlo for being uh, the videographer. Say hello, Arlo. Hi. Okay. Mm -hmm.